Florida has finally found a venomous new animal that is new, but not new in the sense that it's an invasive species that's devastating the local ecosystem. Here are the details. The Miami Herald reports that scientists have found a new species of venomous spider in Miami that looks like a small, shiny black tarantula. It's called the Pine Rockland Trapdoor Spider, and it is indeed a relative of the tarantula. The new spider was first found on the grounds of Zoo Miami. With legs extended, the female can measure up to 7 centimeters wide. This is a trapdoor spider, meaning it lives in a burrow with a hinged cover, like a trapdoor, to hide from predators and ambush unlucky prey. Luckily, the spider's bite is only as painful as a bee's sting to humans. The spiders themselves can be eaten by birds and they can be targeted by wasps who inject wasp eggs into them, which would later hatch as larvas and then devour the spider from the inside. However, the biggest danger to the arachnid is the loss of its habitat. The first specimen was found in critically endangered Pine Rockland forest surrounding Zoo Miami. It is likely that this species is limited to the small area of threatened habitat, which means it could be threatened itself. Although many people would be glad that this scary and venomous cousin of the tarantula is probably heading for extinction, scientists are already making plans to try and save this rare species. Speaking of venomous invasive species, remember this deadly murder hornet that turned up last year? Let's see, 2020 so far. Huge bushfires down under where at least 1 billion animals died? Check. Global pandemic? Check. Large plague of locusts threatening food security in East Africa? Check. Hundreds of giant Asian killer hornets appear for the first time ever in the Northwest US ready to kill honeybees? Check. Wait, what? We wish we were kidding. Just as the world is trying its best to keep its cool in the midst of a pandemic, giant murdering hornets never before seen in American territory are coming out of hibernation. This is what we know. Last December, the Washington State Department of Agriculture confirmed two reports of Asian giant hornets in Blaine, Washington. Reuters reports that two more unconfirmed sightings were reported in Custer, Washington. These killer hornets are now coming out of winter hibernation. Native to Southeast Asia, China, and Taiwan, Asian giant hornets can measure between 1.5 to 2 inches or 3.8 to 25 centimeters in length. Vespa mandarinia, also known as murder hornets, have stingers that deliver venom to their victims and mandibles capable of decapitating bees. According to the WSU Insider, the Asian giant hornet queen wakes from hibernation in April finds nourishment and then looks for a place to establish a colony that will later go out to bring back food. The bee population in the United States is most threatened by these hornets from late summer to early fall. While they hunt for food for their next queens, the hornets will decapitate honeybees and eat the bees' larvae and pupae. Well, you might be thinking, isn't this just nature? The circle of life, so to speak? Nope, not really. First off, we don't know how these hornets made it to the U.S but they have never been found in the country before, so this new species is an invader and definitely a threat to beekeepers. Still not feeling this pertains to you? A threat to bees means a threat to human food production. We need bees in order for many key crops to be pollinated. According to the United States Department of Agriculture, more than a third of all American crop production requires insects to help pollinate, and the primary pollinator is, you guessed it, honeybee colonies. So what can you do? Well, if you live in the States, keep an eye out for these murderous buggers and call authorities if you're unlucky enough to spot one. But in your quest to take down the murder hornet invasion, please be aware of their painful toxin-ridden sting. Oh, and if you're allergic to bees, then definitely stay away because their sting could easily cause a severe anaphylactic shock and even, well, death. U.S. scientists managed to outsmart the dangerous and highly destructive Asian giant hornet by using a series of clever techniques to find and destroy one of their nests in Washington state. The Asian giant hornet also goes by the name murder hornet, and this was the first nest to be found by using dental floss to tie tracking devices onto three of the hornets. One of the murder hornets then led the tracking team to a tree that contained a whole nest of the species. The nest of around 200 hornets was then sucked out of the tree with a vacuum hose. After that, the tree was cut down and destroyed to make sure no other hornets could survive. 
The invasive murder hornet has a powerful sting and can spit venom. They target honeybees, which pollinate crops, and can destroy a colony of honeybees in just a matter of hours. Asian giant hornets are among the world's largest wasps. The queens can reach over 5 centimeters or 2 inches in length. Their venomous sting can penetrate humans' protective clothing. But the number of people they kill each year is low. They kill around 40 people annually in Asia, according to the Smithsonian Museum in Washington, D.C. When an Asian giant hornet enters a honeybee colony, it begins a slaughter phase in which it kills bee after bee and can destroy the colony in a few hours. Apparently, murder hornets, swaths of locusts, and a pandemic are not enough for 2020. Now we're adding Asian gypsy moths to the list. It may not seem like it by the looks of them, but gypsy moths are deadly to vegetation. According to the Washington State Department of Agriculture, in 2017, European gypsy moth caterpillars defoliated around 33% of the entire state of Massachusetts. Well, experts are now saying Asian gypsy moths are even more destructive and somehow they've made their way to the U.S. Here's what we know. A recent proclamation issued by the governor of the state of Washington, Jay Inslee, warns about the detection of Hokkaido gypsy moths in areas in Snohomish County, Washington. This is the first detection of the species in the U.S., the Washington State Department of Agriculture said in a press release. The Asian gypsy moth is native to Russia, according to the National Invasive Species Information Center from the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Asian gypsy moths measure 3.5 inches long, or about 9 centimeters long, and female moths can lay from 500 to 1,000 eggs, according to the U.S. Customs and Border Protection. In a press release, the Washington Department of Agriculture said European gypsy moth caterpillars eat more than 500 types of trees, plants, and shrubs. However, Carla Salp, a spokeswoman for the department, told UPI that Asian gypsy moths pose a greater threat than European gypsy moths because they can consume more species of plants. If the species establishes itself in Washington, it would become a threat to forest ecosystems and would lead to quarantine restrictions and increased homeowner pesticide use, according to Washington's Agriculture Department. But fear not, help is on the way. Washington's Agriculture Department is planning on starting treatments to control the moth pest in Boulevard Bloods and Woodway, Washington. Low-flying airplanes will be applying BTK, a bacteria in a biological insecticide used to eradicate gypsy moths in affected areas. Trillions of cicadas are set to emerge from underground in April or May in 15 states and the District of Columbia, from Illinois east to New York and New Jersey and south into Tennessee and Georgia. The appearance of the group, known as Brood X, follows a period of 17 years of living underground, feeding on tree roots. On appearance, they live up to four weeks and spend most of that time mating. While mating, the male clicks its abdomen and makes an acoustic sound to attract a female. The females respond by snapping their wings. After this, the female cicada lays hundreds of tiny eggs on tree limbs. Then the adult cicadas die. When their eggs hatch, cicada nymphs fall from the tree and burrow into the ground. Here, they'll look for tree roots to feed on and then stay underground for up to 17 years. Writing in The Conversation, University of Connecticut professors of ecology and evolutionary biology John Cooley and Chris Simon say that volunteers who want to help document Brood X's emergence this spring can download the Cicada Safari mobile phone app, provide snapshots, and follow our research in real time online at www.cicadas.yukon.edu. In what reads like a concept for a horror film, scientists have discovered a new species of parasitic fungus that turns flies into tweaking, parasite-spreading zombies. Here is what they found. Two new species of fungi have been discovered in Denmark that turn flies into zombies and eat them from inside out, while the flies shoot out fungus spores like rockets. The new species, Strongwell C. tigrinae and Strongwell C. acerosa, infect two types of Danish fly, Coenotia tigrina and Coenotia testacea, according to research published in the Journal of Invertebrate Pathology. 
Spores from the fungus stick to the fly's cuticle and make their way into the abdomen, where they bore large holes from which thousands of torpedo-shaped spores burst to infect other flies. The fly goes on to live for several days while the fungus devours its genitals, fat reserves, reproductive organs, and lastly, its muscle. During this time, the fly continues to interact with and spread spores to other victims, although researchers say the fungus only infects between 3% and 5% of flies in a healthy population. Researchers from the Natural History Museum of Denmark and the University of Copenhagen's Department of Plant and Environmental Sciences suspect the two fungi may produce substances like amphetamines. These chemicals keep their hosts alive and energized until there is nothing left in its abdomen but fungus. Why is this disgusting new discovery important? Researchers believe the amphetamine-like chemicals that keep the flies invigorated also keep other microorganisms away from the flies' wounds, and this could lead to health benefits for humans. Speaking to The Guardian, University of Copenhagen ecologist Jürgen Eilenberg said, We would definitely like to continue our research, as doing so has the potential to discover and later make use of these substances, perhaps in medicine. Researchers have discovered a Godzilla wasp that deliberately dives underwater to insert parasitic eggs into its prey. Here is what they found. Only a few species of wasps enter water, but a previously unknown species has been discovered in Japan that not only enters water, but dives underwater to search for and attack its prey. The parasitoid wasp was dubbed Microgaster Godzilla because of the Godzilla-like way in which it emerges from the water. It is native to Japan and has evolved enlarged and strongly curved tarsal claws. These are thought to be an adaptation used to grip to the substrate as it enters the water to look for its victim. According to a research article published in the peer-reviewed scientific journal of Hymenoptera Research, the female wasp searches for its host, larvae of the moth species Elophila turbata, by walking over floating plants. Elophila turbata larvae make portable cases from fragments of aquatic plants. They live inside these cases near the surface of the water. Once the wasp finds its host, it probes it with its antenna and eventually forces it out of its case. Sometimes it has to dive completely underwater to evict the caterpillar. Microgaster Godzilla then paralyzes the larva with its ovipositor and inserts its eggs into the caterpillar's flesh. The wasp's parasitic larvae later consume the caterpillar from the inside until they pupate. You're probably wondering whether Mothra comes in. Lead author Jose Fernandez Triana of the Canadian National Collection of Insects elaborated in the journal article. The reasons why we decided to use the name of Godzilla for the wasp species are interesting. First, being a Japanese species, it respectfully honors Godzilla, a fictional monster, kaiju, that became an icon after the 1954 Japanese film of the same name and many remakes afterwards. It has become one of the most recognizable symbols of Japanese popular culture worldwide. Second, the wasp's parasitization behavior bears some loose resemblance to the kaiju character in the sense that the wasp suddenly emerges from the water to parasitize the host, similar to how Godzilla suddenly emerges from the water in the movies. Third, Godzilla has sometimes been associated, albeit in different ways, with Mothra, another kaiju that is typically portrayed as a larva, caterpillar, or an adult moth. As you can see, we had biological, behavioral, and cultural reasons to justify our choice of a name. Of course, that and having a bit of fun, because that is also an important part of life and science. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.